uh, as much as it pains me to say. Um, I do think, okay, so everyone's kind of going on about how much of a bad season he did have last season. Yes, compared to the season he won a golden boot, it was a terrible season, but he still got 10 goals. Like. G'day mate, welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Roo and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to be tier listing, um, ranking the best players for game week one for the 2023-2024 season. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you do subscribe. It's completely free and it really does help out the channel and you'll be um, up to date with all the latest FPL content, FPL news, when the game's released, the fixtures, the form, uh, what players to bring in, all of that. And uh, yeah, smash a like on this video too. So we'll start off. So basically, these are just a few of the top players um, from FPL last last season, and um, I'm just going to be rack ranking them. So we'll start off with the best. The best tier is um, must pick, so you have to get them in. Uh, very good pick. Um, situational pick, so it kind of depends on their price, as the prices haven't been released yet. So um, depends on their price, depends on what team they're going to be playing for. Um, what position they're going to be playing, if they're going to be in the team. Um, but yeah, just it depends on the situation. Completely avoid, doesn't matter what price they're going to be. Um, doesn't matter uh, if they're going to be injured or not, just avoid. And then don't you dare, don't even think about it. Um, don't even have the fault, don't even look at their price because it's just uh, avoid them at all costs. Um, so we're going to go through goalkeepers, defenders, midfielders and forwards. Um the kits are old, so bear that in mind. Some players have transferred clubs, but um, the players are going to be the same. So we'll, we'll start off with um, still the Brighton goalkeeper, a keeper that did really, really well last season. Um, Brighton do have some good fixtures. I know they, they start off at home against Lawton and they have a few good fixtures after that too. Um, for me, I think he's a, he's a good pick. Um, I wouldn't say must have, as there are a few keepers out there that are probably better, but um, obviously still is not going to be as expensive as them. So Edison has a, a really good fixtures to start off with. Man City, um, Arsenal have good fixtures too. Um, so, so yes, they're probably better options, but still, if he's a good price, if he's four point five million or f um, maybe even five million, then then yeah, definitely consider him. So I'd, I would consider him a good pick. Um, I'm going to be talking about a lot about the fixtures. If you haven't seen my fixtures video, definitely go check that out. I'll add um, a link in the description so you can go check that out while I go through the teams of the best fixtures. It'll probably give you a bit more clarity on, on what I'm talking about and why I think these players are good picks. Um, but you can do that after this video if you want as well. Uh, David Raya. Um, for me, he's a situational pick um, just because... It, Obviously, um, he he was going to go Spurs. He's now not going to go Spurs. Um, if he does get picked up by Man United or Chelsea, other teams needing the goalkeeper, then I think he would be a good pick. Um, but again, it all depends on when that is. If that is um, after the game's launched, then he would be expensive. If it's before the game's launch, he'll still have a Brentford price on him. So he'll probably be about five million. Um, whereas the uh, keepers from Man City, uh, Man United, kind of the big six teams, are normally going to be 5.5 or above. So if you can get him at a little bit cheaper because he was still at Brentford when the pricing was made, then go for it. Um, in terms of if he stays at Brentford, they do start the the the, um, the season with Spurs at home and um, and who is it? Uh, Fulham away. So it's not the best start. So um, I would I wouldn't be getting and rushing to get him in. But like I said, if he does go to Man United or Chelsea. Um, or even Spurs, who knows? I know they've signed a keeper, um, but who knows? They could still um, get David Raya and have that keeper as their backup keeper. So for me, I would um, yeah, put him as a situational pick. Um, Nick Pope. So for me, I would be avoiding Nick Pope. Um, he's not a don't you dare, as we've seen how good Newcastle defence can be, but they do start the season with a tough... Um, a tough running. So they've got Villa at home. Villa's not an easy team. Uh, City away, Liverpool at home, uh, Brighton away, Brentford at home, and then Sheffield United away. So not the easiest start for Newcastle. So I would be avoiding Nick Pope for now. But later on in the season, I can feel like he's going to be um, a good option to have as um, their fixtures do turn a little bit better. So um, Tyrone Mings is the next player. 
Um, again, Villa don't have the easiest fixtures. They've got Newcastle away, Liverpool away in their first five games. So for me, I'd avoid for now. Um, again, if you can get him at a 4.5 million price, I feel like he would he will be 5 million now. So for that reason, I'm going to go avoid. Um, I do think Villa will have a strong defence this season, but um, I think there are better uh, assets out there. Moreno, uh, Martinez, the goalkeeper, is probably a little bit better. Um, so for now, I'd, I'd say avoid uh, Tyrone Mings. Um, next up, we've got Sven Botman. Um, I would be avoiding Botman, um, just like Pope. Um, for me, the, you know what I'd probably put, don't you dare? There's just no need to have Botman in your team at this current stage. Um for me, Newcastle's fixtures are just not the best to start off with. So um for that reason, um I would be I would be avoiding him. Um having said that, at some stage of the season you might want to double up, but it's probably better to go for, for Pope anyway. Um when you're talking about Newcastle though, you've got Trippier as well, which who I'll bring in next. Um for me. He's a situational pick. I personally wouldn't go for him. I would avoid him. But I can see the, the benefits. We saw how great he can be. He gets the assists. He gets the goals. He gets the bonus points. However, he did fall off towards the end of last season. Newcastle's clean sheets did fall off. So it's all um, situational. I think there are better um, players out there. But again, if you want to get Chipper in, I don't, I don't hate it at all. Um. Next up is a kanji. So I probably would go, don't you dare. I think um, there are now Man City's uh, defensive line are probably all fit. You'd probably say Diaz, Stones, um, Ake are all ahead of him in terms of centre back. Right back, he could be, he could be the option for right back. But um, for me, um, I just wouldn't go there. I think you might as well just go get Edison, go get Diaz, go get Stones. Um, I don't see the, a world where you're going to be looking at a Kanji to save. Maybe you're going to save 0.5 million, but for me, I just wouldn't wouldn't go there. Uh, next up, we've got Trent Alexander-Arnold. He is a must pick for me for, for game week one. Um, we know how great he can be. Um, he started off last season not the best, but as, as the season progressed and as Liverpool's form progressed, he did um, start to get them assists and goals. And for me, he's a must-have. I don't really care about his price. He could be 8000000 million. I'd, I'd just still get him in. If you could just think about him like an 8 million midfielder that gets goals, gets gets assists and gets clean sheets, um, then I think he's a he's a must-have for game week one. Um, next up is Pedro Poro. I've got him, I've put him in a situational pick. So I do think he's a good asset and I do think he'll have a good season. I'm just not too sure on Spurs' fixtures and how Spurs will line up defensively at the start of the season. I know Ange Postacoglu is an attacking manager, um, so um, I'm not too sure how that will work out, where Spurs have fullbacks that are, are really wing-back. So um, Pedro Porro, Perisic, um, Sessegnon, they're all wing-backs. Um, and even even Jed Spence, um, who's coming back, and and Udogi, who's going back, is is going to be a wing back. So I'm not too sure how they're going to deal with playing four at the back. So for me, I'd wait. Um, I'd to get a bit more information, but I do think Pedro Foro, Poro will be a good option at the start or at at some point this season. Um, going from wing back to wing back, um, a player that can play right back as well is um, Reese James. So for me. It's a tough one with Reese James. I'll probably go for him as a as a as a good pick. Um, it's a pick that is a little bit out there as well. So you're going to see a lot of teams starting the season with with players that did well in the last in the last year. And um, we all know Chelsea didn't do well, <laughs> um, so they're going to have a Brighton, Arsenal, City defense, one of each probably, um, and then the rest of it might be a United, a Spurs, a Chelsea, a Newcastle. Um, and I think Rhys James could could be a good option. I know he he um, starts the season with Liverpool and West Ham away, but they do have Luton at home, Forest at home, Bournemouth away and Everton away in the next four. So if he can stay fit, again, we don't know if he's going to be fit for the start of the season. I assume so. So I put him in a very good pick. Um, but yeah, Rhys James, 
under Pochettino. We know how good Walker and Rose were with, with Spurs um, when Pochettino was managing Spurs. So I think Reese James is a is a punt, I'd say, to start the season and a, and a very good pick. Um, Luke Shaw next. For me, I'd go situational pick. So only because Man United's fixtures are not the best. So, OK, they've got Wolves at home, but then they've got Spurs away and Arsenal away and Brighton at home in the next um in the first four. So for me the fixtures are just not not good enough. Um if you can if if you want to get him in, I don't hate it. They do have good home games against Wolves, um, Forest. Um but for me I just I just probably hold out with that one. Um I won't go avoid because I do think he, he's an okay option, but for me um, I wouldn't be rushing to bring him in. Um Estupinan is a a tough one. I'll probably go I'll probably go must must have to be honest. Um for that again I think he's gonna be he's gonna be about five million. Brighton have unbelievable fixtures start the season. Um Luton at home, Wolves away, uh West Ham at home, okay, Newcastle at home, Man United away, but then Bournemouth at home. Um so really good fixtures. I think he's the best defensive option for Brighton. He's the most attacking um and I feel like last season he didn't get the attacking returns he deserved. Um, there was one game I watched where he could have scored a hat-trick um, and he never. So I think there's more to come from him and I think he is a must-have to start for game week one. Next up, we've got Almiron. Don't you dare. Um, yes, he had a good start to the season last season, but for me, he didn't keep that up. Newcastle are bringing in more options. They've got Anthony Gordon now. Um, they've got uh, Tonali that might be coming in where Joe Linton could play further forward. They've got St. Maximin, they've got um they've got uh Isaac as well can play on the wing. So for me, I would be leaving Almiron as far away from your team as possible. Um Andreas Pereira. I'd probably go for a void. I know he's had a good season, but for me, he's gonna be more expensive. He's gonna be 5.5, 6.5 million around that price point. And with Fulham's fixtures, they don't look the best. In their first six, they got Arsenal away, Man City away. So for me, that is a that is an avoid. And with Mitrovic back from his ban, he's likely to be back on penalties. So Pereira doesn't even have that. So for me, I'd avoid for now, um, especially because of the price that he's likely to be. So next is Phil Foden. Again, this is a tough one. Um, I'll probably group Phil Foden and Mares. Would I group Phil Foden and Mares the same? I'd go, I'd go avoid for Mares and I'd put um situational pick for Foden. So we'll start with Foden. Um for me, I think Foden will start to get more minutes. He I think he will start playing centrally. Now Gundawan is gone, Bernardo Silva is likely to go. Um he could play on the right, but for me, I think he's gonna start playing centrally. I think he's gonna be more involved this season. He's gonna be the me- the main guy for City. Um Whereas in the past seasons, yes, he's, he has been at some points, but he hasn't lasted the whole season. Where now, I think he's ready for that. I must mean, really, I think he's ready to step up now. They've set in some of their, um, some of their players that have been there for years. And the reason I've gone avoid for Mares is, I think he might be sold. Um, one, two, if he does stay, I see, t- I see too many options for City on that right. Yes, they've sold Bernardo. Well, they, no, they haven't sold him yet, so let's not say that. So they've got Bernardo Silva, they've got Foden, um, they've got Alvarez that can play on the right as well. So for me, I just wouldn't trust Mares. Um, KDB is a player um, I'm going to put in situational as well. Again, it just depends on his price. If he's 12 million, no way. Much rather have Foden, but if he's less than that, if he's 9.5, 10 million, I think KDB is a is a great option to start game week one with. Um, but for, for 12 million, there's no no chance. Uh next up, we've got McAllister, who's who's wearing a Brighton kit in this in this picture, but he's obviously plays with Liverpool now. And for that reason, I wouldn't even dare go near him. Um, he's probably not going to be on penalties, he's probably going to be playing a bit deeper. Um, all the good things about him for Brighton. I just scrapped now he's playing for Liverpool. Um, you don't really see Liverpool midfielders in terms of central three midfielders, obviously not Salah, etc. Um 
you don't see them score many goals. Henderson, Wijnaldum, um, Fabino, um, you don't really see them, yeah, chip in with goals or assists. So I can't see that with McAllister either, and I can't see him on penalties. So it's a it's a straight. Don't you dare. Um, Matoma is. I'd put Matoma as a as a very good pick. So he, obviously he's going to be more expensive. Probably going to be about seven million. Um, but with Brighton's fixtures, I think one Brighton mid is a is probably a must with how good their fixtures are. And I think Matoma is the best of their mids. Yes, he's not on penalties. Yes, he probably stays out wide too far, but he does look their most dangerous player um, last season. And and yeah, I think this season is just going to get better and better and better. So Matoma is a very good pick for me. Um, Martinelli is... Very good. I'd go situational for Martinelli. It just all depends if, he's, if you think he's going to start. Arsenal's fixtures are probably the best in the league. So uh, Forrest at home... Palace away, Fulham at home, Man United at home, Everton away. So some really good fixtures, but Trossard is going to be there. Havertz is going to be fighting for maybe the left wing spot. Um, for me, if Martinelli doesn't look like he's starting in preseason, then I would avoid. But if he does look like he's starting and he's a good price, then I think he can be a good option. Um, Martin Odegaard, I think, is a very good pick. Um, I don't hate his pick. You know he's going to start. You know he can get the goals and assists. We've seen it last season. Um, and for me, he's going to start most games. So I think if you want a solid Arsenal option that is going to start most games, then Odegaard is the one for you. Um, next up is Bakayo Saka. For me, is a must-have for game week one. Um, I wouldn't probably double up on Arsenal. So I'd say I'd pick out of Saka and Odegaard. And obviously the price might determine who you go for. But for me, I think Saka is a better option, although Odegaard did finish on higher points in him last season. Um, but the penalties, probably, I wouldn't say more guaranteed, but both of them are probably nailed on. Um, Saka's the main guy, really, let's be honest. Um, he's the star boy, as they like to say, the Arsenal fans. So um, I think Saka, Saka is a must-have for your FPL team. Um, next is Marcus Rashford. Um, I'm going to put again. It depends on his price. So a lot of a lot of these depends on their price. So I'm going to put um, Fernandez and Rashford in situational. So for me, um, I think it depends on if they're bringing a striker and who that striker is. Second, um, for Rashford, it depends on his price. If he goes up to ten, ten and a half, no chance. If Fernandez stays at nine, etc., then okay. For me, if, if Rashford is between, let's say, eight and nine, then I think, yeah, he's a good pick. But apart from that, I just I just probably wouldn't go for them at the start of the season. But again, if their price is great, then then why not? Um, next up, we've got Salah. For me, he's a very good pick, but he's not a must pick for um, game week one. Yes, yes, they've got good fixtures, but... But I just don't know. I just don't know about Salah. Yes, you've got the penalties. Um, but I just don't know if Liverpool are going to come back. Like, Salah did great last season, yes. But for that price, 13, 12 and a half million, he's probably going to be... You're probably going to get Haaland as a guarantee. You can't You can't really afford to get Salah at, at the way the pricing looks at the moment. Um, with If you wanted to get Trent, if you wanted to get Saka, if you wanted to get... Rashford, if you wanted to get um, Martin Lilly or Foden or someone like that, then you can't afford Salah. And for me, I think I'd rather have um, a team with Saka, Trent, etc., than just have Salah and, and a bunch of 4 millions, 4.5 millions. Um, <clears throat> having said that, I do think he's a good pick. So um, if you can get him in and you're happy with your team, then, then yeah, I think go for it. Um. Next up is Human Son. For me, I would I would be avoiding Son as much as it pains me to say. Um, I do think okay, so everyone's kind of going on about how much of a bad season he did have last season. Yes, compared to the season he won a golden boot, it was a terrible season, but he still got 10 goals. Like Son 
over the last part from that season, he got the golden boot. He's he's got between ten and fifteen goals. Sometimes he's hit twenty, but um, for me, ten is not is not the worst. Having said that, I would avoid just for now. I do think he's going to do good under and Postecoglou, but for me, I would be waiting to see that. So I would avoid him just for now. Um, and again, Spurs start the season with Brentford away and Man United at home, so it's a tough, tough running. Um. Next up is Cody Gakpo. Um, I actually think Gakpo goes into very good pick two. Again, it depends if he's going to be a midfielder or forward. Um, but I think his price is going to be much cheaper than Salah. I actually think he's nailed as well. I think he's nailed in that centre forward spot. No Firmino now. Yes, you've got Jota and Nunes, who we'll talk about um, in the next couple of minutes. But for me, I think Gakpo is that little bit nailed, uh, more nailed. And he's shown that he can score goals and get assists. Um, Jota is going, don't you dare. And Darwin Nunes is going, don't you dare. Although I think they will play games. I just think Diaz is locked, Salah's locked, and Gakpo is going to be the front three for Liverpool. So because of that, I would I would put Jota and Nunes in, don't you dare. It's not worth the risk. I think they're going to be both going to be forwards. So for me, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't waste a forward spot. I wouldn't waste the money on them, um, not knowing... Um, who who's going to be playing? Um, anyway, next up we've got we've got um, Mitrovic. For me, I'd avoid. Not for now. Yes, he did well last season, but um, I'd wait to see how Fulham do. Yeah, you could have second season syndrome where they've come up, they've done well, finished top half. I think they finished in the end. Um, but towards the end of last season, they did fall off. Obviously, the Mitrovic ban was a was a big one and um, obviously he's back now but for me I'd just be avoided Mitrovic for the time being until you know more and Fulham's fixtures again are not the best Brentford, Arsenal, City um, City and Arsenal away in the first four games is shocking so um, I'd avoid I'd avoid Mitrovic for now Alexander Izak don't you dare um, as we mentioned Newcastle terrible fixtures and it's probably going to be playing on the left um, as we've seen Callum Wilson um, take that striker spot from from Isaac. So um, I can't see Cannon Wilson being dropped after the season he had last season. Yes, there's any chance of injury, but then you don't reevaluate. But for game week one, there's no way I'm having um, Alexander Isaac in my team. Um, Callum Wilson, same. Yes, you could put him into a void. I said maybe if I'm a bit harsh, we'll put him into a void as I think he's a better option than Isaac. But for game week one, not for me um, at all, to be honest. Um, Ivan Tony, um, yeah, I'd say he's a must. Nah, I'm only joking. So don't you dare. He's banned until January, yeah, for those that didn't know, because of his gambling charges. So um, don't you even think about putting Tony in your team. But his teammate and Buemo could be a good option, depending on his price. Um, who's likely to have that number nine slot? Um, now Tony's banned. But yeah, for Tony, don't bring him in. Don't even think about it. Um, he's going to be banned until January. So um, next up, we've got Haaland. Must pick for game week one for me. Um, do I need to say any more? It could be 13, 14, 15 million. Just get him in your team. The guy's ridiculous. He's he's um, the highest ever kind of Premier League goal scorer in a single season last season, breaking all the records, untold hat-tricks. The guy's ridiculous. Get him in your team, captain him every single week. Um He's just ridiculous and City going to be scary next season if they do end up getting um, Declan Rice, who they're rumoured to be getting. But when this video comes out, he might have already gone to Arsenal, so not too sure. But um, anyway, City are going to be going to be good anyway. Um, lastly, or not lastly, we've got, got one more, but Harry Kane again is a must pick. I think he's done so well the last two, three seasons with defensive coaches, with Nuno Espirito Santo, with Antonio Conte, um, with Jose Mourinho. That, for me, with an attacking coach, with James Madison feeding him, unbelievable. He's going to do so well. Again, he might leave and go to Bayern. But um, if that doesn't happen, I think Kane is a must-have. Um, this is why I put, I put Salah in a very good picks rather than must-have, as I, I do prefer Kane. But... Um, 
yeah, it's going to be hard to get Kane Harland in your team. But for me, I think that he's a must-have. Oli Watkins, um, again, another tough option as as Villa's fixtures are okay. Um, they've got Liverpool away and Newcastle away and Chelsea away in the first six. So for me, I'd avoid. I do think Oli Watkins is a good option at some point this season, but for now, um, I'd be I'd be avoiding him. Um, so this is the end of the tier list. Let me know what you think in the top tier. We've got Trent, um, Estupinan, Saka, Haaland and Kane. Um, let me know if you agree. Let me know um, who else you'd have in the top tier or the bottom tier. Um, and yeah, leave a comment below what you think on this tier list. And if you are new to the channel, please do subscribe. It really helps out the channel. Loads of content coming throughout the summer and throughout the season. And uh, smash a like on this video too, as it uh, really does help out the channel. And it and it's absolutely free. So it costs you nothing and it really helps me out. So um, anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. And be sure to check out some of my other videos on the fixtures um, and my first draft as well. And I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers. Mm -hmm.